Down goes the flag and the 1984 James Hardy 1000 is up the way and it is George Fury, Peter Brock and Alan Grice running up with Adam Crane. Steve Masterton's got in, Tom Walkinshaw is stalled there on the starting line. The rest of the field passing him by. He's been collected by a Camaro. Peter Williamson has also gone into the side of his car and we have the track blocked across the main straightaway. So we've had uh, a very, very big accident here at the start of the race. It's got to be a restart, surely. I mean, the traffic will never get through here. They're going to have to flag them down across the top of the mountain and bring them back for a restart. Tom Walkinshaw is all right. Camaro, 34, slammed into him. Couldn't possibly avoid him. Unfortunately, that's the uh, Bundy and uh, car entry. Peter Williamson slumped over his car. The Wang Computer Jaguar, number 12, Tom Walkinshaw. Obviously, the number 77, Williams and O'Brien Toyota, Walkingshaw and Goss are out, and Tesserero and Tyndall are also out at this stage. Carter and Murden out also on lap one. Someday, the organisers are going to realise that this race needs a warm-up lap, just like we did, not a parade lap. Ten seconds away from the start of the 1984 great race. They're racing and getting away smartly as Peter Brock on the outside. Fury miffed the start completely and Johnson ranges up on the inside to take over uh, second place as they run to the first corner. Tagging him is uh, Alan Grice and then Fury getting into stride. The BMW is out wide and then John Harvey making a good start as well as they stream up mountain straight. And there's the view of the entire field as it heads off for the first time up to the mountain and towards GTX Bend. Over the top and dropping down to the lip, it's Peter Brock in front, Johnson in second, Grice is third, and look at the challenge on back behind them, the black BMW and Alan Moffat already putting pressure there. Brock in front, the 05 Commodore Johnson goes through in second place, then Alan Grice. George Fury, boy is he going to be disappointed about this restart because he got away really well first time round off pole position, but uh, on the restart, blew it badly and is in fourth spot. Alan Moffat hard on his heels in the RX-7. Over the top they come, sweeping through, Castrol Curve, onto the top of the mountain, hear the crowd roar! Past Reed Park, on down to McPhillamy, take the left-hand curve. Linus turn. Nobody gets wide here and survives. Jansen, Cullen, McLeod, through they stream. The big forward of Brian Callahan in there as well. through Forest Elbow and for the first time down Conrod Strait. And here they come. They'll be looking for speeds of 260 kilometres an hour or more. Peter Brock, Dick Johnson go by. There's Alan Grice now. Scott, sorry, Fury and Moffat. Into the braking section, down through the gears and Brock is first on the first lap. Car number 75, that's Laurie Hazelton, who is up at the top of the mountain. Now, how did they manage to get stuck in there against that? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, that's how it happened. A little tap on the side, then Hazelden, the Capri, comes heading across, and boom! Chris Heyer meets him, going through. Gathering him in a little, pulls out to the right. Slipstreaming him, obviously, before. Has he got enough to go past under brakes? No, he's got to back off. As they negotiate Murray's corner. This is a real contest, isn't it? Great stuff. Grice still sitting here on the tail, but he'll have a, a crack at uh, Harvey on the run up. Um, oh, up Fury! Oh, Fury is brilliant. Them. Harvey's off. Harvey has gone off on the right hander, bounced off the wall. Fury arrived. Excuse me, boys, and he went through the pair of them. And Steve Masterton, Masterton apparently has just gone into the wall on the run down. I think to Forest Elbow. That is not good news for the Masterton Holmes 2WS race team. There has been a coming together, as you can see there. The car has gone across into the wall, into the earth embankment. Out of uh, Alan Grice's car coming down. Whoops, there is smoke and dust. 
And there's Steve Masterton by the look of it, going off the course and crash and almost getting Grice on the way back. Watching Rocking in front, Grice second, Fury third, Johnson fourth, Harvey fifth. And Cullen and Jones in their Commodore now up into sixth spot. Whoa, one of the Rovers is in the wall, car 60, Steve Soper and Ron Dixon's entry. Oh, the Group A uh, lead. They were running second, in fact, in the Group A category. They just consider how good these guys are. They're on a public road. They're racing. Oh, there's not much room there, but Grice takes the advantage, and Grice goes through to take the lead in the James Hardy 1000. You saw it with Race Cam as we drop into the Wilco cutting. So we'll try and catch up for you and see what has happened here. Coming down. There's English, the last car on screen. Uh-oh. Uh He's got into the side of the clearer hand Mazda RX-7. Clearer hand's heading out to the wall. He decides he's turning the other way. Oh, my oh. goodness me. Lumps of concrete flying everywhere. Knocked a big hole in the wall. So we now have 05, Peter Brock. We have a driver change now coming in. In goes Steve Harrington. Fury's gone by. Johnson has gone by. But a bit of a problem, Harrington can't start the car. Mechanics now pushing it to get it rolling. Uh, so a, a delay here for the Alan Grice, Steve Harrington Commodore. Mechanics pushing it fury, furiously up pit lane. The car fires, Steve Harrington back onto the track. OK, Peter Brock is taking a breather for the moment and I think he would be delighted to see his uh, co-driver and a winning co-driver that and Larry Perkins still at the head of the field. Uh, we picked up 15 seconds on Gricey there just in the pitch, you know, and that's just, I mean, on the track you have to work very, very hard, 15 seconds. There it was there in the pitch just with a uh, crew, did two fabulous stops. Mine was uh, 30 seconds and John's was 27 seconds. And uh, that's, I mean, people around just applaud them. They said it was fantastic. We're following George Fury, sat on pole for this race and has dropped off the pace just a little bit in the last uh, five or six laps. Back into about uh, fifth spot in the field at the moment. And uh, in front of him is Greg Hansford in the number 42 car. As we head up, that could be, must be John Harvey, is it? In front of him in the 25 car. Okay, coming out of there, onto the straight. Ah, oh, Grice is gone. Round sideways into the, he's hit the wall. Alan Grice in the wall. No, it's uh, Steve Harrington. Race cam. Tony Mulverhill and Brian Nightingale are in the sand trap in their Tokiko RX-7. And they're there for good. Well, what a sad end to the James Hardy 1000. Buried there. Ooh. Yeah, well, he's not upset much. Coming down to the dipper and the S's there through the dipper. Ooh. Very difficult. Minute, I'm going to be on the straight. Now, we're on the straightaway now in a moment. Coming down to Forest Elbow. And as we come out of Forest Elbow, Prince Leopold, how are you enjoying the James Hardy 1000? Oh, I enjoy it very much. It's just very much fun for me. At the moment, I'm uh, feeling very happy. The car was wonderful. We had in a uh, first third, we had a trouble with uh, the front wheel, but we changed that and now the car is running beautifully. And I think it's a great for track here. Oh. oh, our second place man, is that Dick Johnson it is. pulling up? What's the problem? Oh, some goddamn thing in the tank, I don't know. What, you, you got a fuel blockage? No, oh, it's not a blockage, mate, it just won't pick it up. Coming up through the cutting. They just wait for the reception that he'll receive on top of the mountain from all the fans that have assembled up there. They're waving us out. Look at the fans out on the hill waving the banners, the Australian flag. Go Commodore, go. Parsons just goes past the pit straight now, so Brock's going to do this one by himself. Acknowledging the cheers and moving off to the left-hand side of the road to allow those other cars still to continue. Uninterrupted, and I say that's exactly what Peter Brock's waiting for. But David Parsons to try and form up so they can go one two across the mountain. And the crowd really giving Peter Brock a send off. The last trip of the uh, V8 Big Bangers, as they're called, the Group C touring cars, and Brock has done it again. Eight wins at Mount Panorama. I think the mayor of the city might even call this Mount Brock. 
Here he comes. Don't say this wasn't orchestrated. A 1-2 for the dealer team. Peter Brock in 0-5 comes across the line to win the 1984 James Hardy 1000. Second place will go to his dealer teammate, David Parsons, in the number 25 car.